All right, welcome back to section three. Now in this section, we're gonna cover your support system, behaviors for success, ways to practice and study for the exam as well as your study environment. So let's get started. Now, first of all, let's take a look at your support system. Planning for this exam is a huge commitment. I spoke to my family about my wishes and I would encourage you to do the same. Once everyone has agreed and understood the time commitment, I set the date for the exam. Then I set up a study schedule with dates for full length exams. I stuck to that schedule no matter what happened. I would encourage you to determine the date you can realistically sit for your exam. If you have a partner or family that will be affected by your decision, speak to them. Tell them your plans. Make sure you tell them of the time commitments that's going to be required to study and the fact that you may not be as engaged as you normally are. But this is important to you and to the future of your family. If you are employed, speak to your employer. Make sure they are okay with the commitments as well. Remember, your support system is important during this process, so don't neglect sharing your plans. Now, when everyone is on board and willing to support you, schedule the exam and never think once about rescheduling. The only reason you should ever reschedule your exam is if it is a life or death situation. That's the way I thought of it. In fact, I did have to reschedule mine once because my uncle passed away and then two weeks later, my aunt passed away. Both of them were my mom's siblings, so I wanted to be there. Now, while I did not want to reschedule my exams, it is possible to do so and necessary sometimes. Keep in mind that there are restrictions, so be sure you explore the ASQ website prior to making any decisions about rescheduling the exam. Moving on, be sure to incorporate daily exercising into your schedule. Set the time you're going to go to bed every night and wake up every morning. Remember to keep a positive mindset. Keep in mind that your psychological state can change your physical state and your physical state can shift your psychological state. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, take a nightmare, for example. Have you ever woken up afraid after a nightmare? Perhaps your heart was racing and you were sweating or maybe even crying. However, you were safe and sound in your bed. You were in no real danger your subconscious actually affected your physical condition. Likewise, you can alter your mental state by changing your physical state. When I wake up in the morning, I smile. I immediately change my physical state and I can tell you that it's in wonders for my mental state. I'm a much more positive person. I now wake up and tell the day it's going to be great. When I didn't do this, I allow negative situations to dictate my day. Don't let that happen. You tell the day how it's going to be. Try it out for yourself. Now don't use this study course as the only way to practice. Make up note cards you can take with you. Review formulas, questions, and answers. Be sure to focus on the red and amber green areas from your RAG results. When you review material, be sure it all aligns with the ASQ Six Sigma Black Belt Body of Knowledge. Use your note cards while on lunch breaks or in the morning before you leave for work. You have 24 hours in a day. Do not waste any of it. Use every moment to practice and study. You don't want to arrive on exam day and think, if I had only studied a little more. There is also a great free app you can download for your iPhone or Android device called the OPEX Resource, Operational Excellence. I've included it on the PDF download for this section. Use it to study and familiarize yourself with the concepts that align with the ASQ Six Sigma Black Belt Body of Knowledge. Now, when it comes to your study environment, you'll want to set it up in a way that's conducive with your learning style. For me, I like quiet places. However, I have three small kids, so it's, it wasn't really always possible for me to study in a quiet place. Whenever I found myself in these situations, which was quite often to be honest with you, I would use silicone earplugs. I've been using these silicone earplugs since graduate school, and I can tell you they work like a charm. I'll put a link and description in the PDF download for this section. I've also used over-the-ear noise-canceling headphones with binaural beats. I've also used over-the-ear noise-canceling headphones with binaural beats playing. I'll include these headphones as well in the PDF download. Now, the binaural beats are quite unique, and I will include the YouTube channel in a link within the PDF download as well that I used while studying. If you've never heard of binaural beats, be sure to review the PDF for this section because I'll include a little description there uh, along with where you can find the YouTube station that I listen to these beats on. Now, I'm not sure about the science behind these beats, although some people swear by them. But I can tell you they help me tune out noise and help me focus and concentrate. 
Is it a placebo effect? Hey, I don't know and I really don't care because it's helped me out on more than one exam. And that's it for this module and I will see you in the next module.